Ask a developer what they do and they'll say they write code. Actually, we spend way more time reading code and trying to understand it. But we hate reading code, especially badly written code, by which I mean other people's code or code I wrote ages ago, like last week. With the rise of AI, we're reading more code than ever. More code that we didn't write, more code that we might not understand. What can we do to get better at reading code? What can we do to perhaps hate it a little less? Hello and welcome to the Continuous Delivery Channel. I'm Trisha G. I'll be your host today. On this channel, we like to discuss what really matters to developers and help them to learn from our experiences and our mistakes. Subscribe if you want to see more and hit the like button if you get something out of this video. The rise of generative AI as a productivity tool is supposed to be a good thing, but I can't help thinking that it takes away the fun part of being a developer, writing code, and leaves us with the much less fun part, reading code. We've always read code more than we've written it, but we don't talk much about the skill of reading code. We talk about writing readable code, but not about learning how to read that code, no matter how readable it's supposed to be. When we teach coding, we focus on teaching someone how to write code. We don't teach someone how to understand existing code or how to find the correct place to make changes or to insert new code. In this video, I'm going to explore why we hate reading code and give practical tips to help us understand the code that we're reading. Next week, we'll be launching a Black Friday sale. There will be 25% off all of our courses across the whole site, but there will also be an extra special offer of 50% off for the first 100 people who use the limited Black Friday coupon code. The coupons work on a first come first served basis and there are only 100. So do make sure to join the mail list to get early notifications of our Black Friday sale. There's links in the description below. Developers hate reading code. We hate reading code because we don't understand it. Perhaps because we didn't write it or because our past selves might as well have been another person. We hate reading code because we're judging it as we read it. We know a better way of doing it. We wouldn't have done it this way. And this applies whether the code is written by someone else or written by us. We hate reading code because it's boring. It's not like reading a novel. It's not a story. We hate reading code because it doesn't give you dopamine like writing code. When you write code, you're creating something and it does something or the tests pass or there's a new thing on the screen. It doesn't feel like you're doing anything when you're reading code. It doesn't feel like you're being productive. And we hate reading code because we don't practice it. We do it all the time, but we don't do deliberate practice. We don't intentionally get better at reading code the same way that we intentionally get better at writing code or refactoring it. It reminds me of this quote. My fingers, said Elizabeth, do not move over this instrument in the masterly manner which I see so many women's do. They do not have the same force or rapidity and do not produce the same expression. But then I have always supposed it to be my own fault because I will not take the trouble of practicing. We won't get better at something unless we practice it. We don't really take the skill of reading code very seriously. We certainly don't take it as seriously as the skill of writing code. But since we read code so much more often than we write it, we should be taking reading code very seriously as a skill. We should be practicing it. We should be getting better at it. So let's take a look at some practical things you can practice to become more comfortable reading code. Before we do that, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, Equal Experts, Transfic, Tuple, Honeycomb and Ultra Edit. They all offer products or services that are well aligned with what we care about on this channel. Take a look at the links in the description below. My first tip, navigate the code. Don't write the code. When we're trying to understand what code does, when we're trying to find the bug, when we're trying to identify where to put the new feature, we should be navigating around the code to have a look at what shape the code is, which bits of the code are calling which other bits of the code and how it all fits together. 
I'm going to show you some tips in my IDE which help me to navigate through the code. You'll see as we do this, we don't read code in the same way we would read a novel. We don't read it from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. We read it more like we read the internet, using hyperlinks to skip through and find the relevant information. Here are some of my favorite shortcuts for navigating around code. The shortcuts will appear at the bottom of the screen, so I won't necessarily say what all the buttons are. You can navigate to the implementation of something, which is really helpful if you're working with interfaces. You can find usages of a class or a method, look through the results to see where this is being used and how. You can go to a specific line and you can drill into the implementations of methods. In fact, there's a difference between go to declaration, which will often take you to the declaration on an interface, for example, versus go to implementation, which will take you to the thing you probably wanted to see, the implementation details of that method. You'll also see that I'm using navigate back and navigate forward, which I use quite a lot to just figure out exactly where I've been and where I need to be next. You can also use recent files to see all the files you've been working with recently or recent locations, which includes snippets within the same file sometimes. This will take you back to certain bits of files that you've been looking at. Of course, you can always use Command F to find something. Probably more helpful is Command Shift F, which will look across the whole of your project. So I can look for anything here. You can look through the results, or sometimes it's quite helpful to open this in the Find window to see all the results in one place. Rather than using a brute force search, you can search everywhere this will search through everything, all classes, files, which includes directories, symbols, which includes methods. I find this most helpful because if I'm looking for a filter method, I'll probably find it in here and I can see the signature of the method. So I'll probably be able to find the one I'm looking for. My second tip, which goes hand in hand with navigating the code, is to make notes. It's all well and good navigating through the code finding out what calls what, where the data comes from, where it flows to, which bits contain the logic, if we don't make a note of that so we can remember it in the future. Make notes about what's going on. There's no right or wrong way to do this and there are many approaches. I, for example, do like to use a physical piece of paper, a physical notebook to make notes. This works for me. The limitation of using this is that it only really works well if it's always with you if you're going to take it everywhere you work or you always work in the same physical place. If I need access to all my notes wherever I am, I use OneNote. But you could be using Evernote, Google Drive, Dropbox, any number of note-taking applications. The key is those notes are synced across multiple computers and even your phone. I also like that some of these apps support freehand drawing and inserting photos or screenshots. If you're fortunate enough to have a whiteboard, you can make notes on a whiteboard. This is particularly helpful if you want to do diagrams, which I'll come to in a minute. My notes are often in list form. That's what works for me. But I work with people who scrawl what looks like random annotations and doodles at various angles all over the page. I can't make head nor tail of these notes, but they work well for those people because of the different way their brains work. Which leads me to another tip. Draw pictures. Pictures are a really important way for us to understand stuff. These pictures don't have to be official UML diagrams. You don't have to use a diagramming piece of software and you almost definitely don't want to use diagrams generated from the code. You just need to draw something which makes sense to you. Often, if we write notes and do drawings, these two different ways of codifying the information can help create a mental model which sticks in our head. You can draw these pictures wherever you want on paper, on a whiteboard, or on your tablet, phone, or laptop, which is easier if you have a stylus. So far, I've suggested notes and diagrams which are away from the code. However, you might want to keep the notes with the code itself. So tip four, annotate the code. You might want to use comments. You might want to rename methods to make it clear what those methods do. I'll mention refactoring again a bit later on. You might want to use a feature called code folding, which is something I've been using in IntelliJ IDEA. It's quite a useful way to hide away the distracting parts of the code, but annotate it with something that reminds us what it does. 
We could even use it to effectively comment a specific section of code. The bonus here is that it clearly marks the beginning and the end of the commented code. You can also use it to group together related methods so you and other readers have a clearer idea of the theme of the methods. A short and shameless plug. If you are interested in any of the IDE tips that I'm covering in this video, I've got a whole section in my book, Getting to Know IntelliJ IDEA, about how to use IntelliJ IDEA to better understand code. There is a link in the description below. My next tip might sound obvious, but I don't think our industry has been great at encouraging this practice. Ask questions. We don't like to look stupid. We don't like to look like we don't know the answers. However, we can't possibly know everything about the code or about the history of the code or about exactly who uses it and how. If we don't understand something, we don't have to bang our head against it. There might be someone in our team who can answer our questions. You may want to use something like the terribly named git blame to find out who to ask questions to. You'll be able to see who last worked on the code that you're looking at. If you're fortunate enough to pair program while you're understanding a piece of code, obviously you and your pair can ask each other questions, can bounce things off each other. It's more likely, particularly if you're working remotely, that you're going to need to ask questions asynchronously over Slack or email or a shared Google Doc or whatever. But you should feel free to ask questions. And if your company culture is not one which encourages asking questions, try changing the culture. If you're senior in the team, you should set the culture by asking questions, especially the obvious or sometimes stupid questions. If one of the most experienced team members is comfortable asking questions, it shows everyone else this is acceptable and expected. Here's a tip that regular viewers of this channel probably expected much earlier in the video. Use tests. Use tests to find out what the code should be doing. I am, of course, assuming there are automated tests in your code base, and I really hope for your sake that that's true. Find the tests. In IntelliJ IDEA, you can use the keyboard shortcut Command, Shift, and T to go to the test for a specific class. It will also be pretty smart about finding tests which look like they're vaguely related to the class that you're trying to test. Once you navigate to that test, you can have a look at what that test is doing. Hopefully, it has a useful method name which tells you the expected behavior of the code. Hopefully, the test is readable so that you can see things like what needs to be in place in order for the method to work. Hopefully, the test will give you some clues as to what the method does and hopefully why. One way to understand the code may be to break those tests. So the tests go green, that's great. How can you make them fail? Have a bit of a play with changing the test code or the production code to see how to make those tests fail. That should prove or disprove any theories you have around how the code works. Whether you have existing tests or not, you can write new tests for the code to check any hypotheses you have about how it works. If you think that the place order method will reject orders that have a particular value, write a test to prove or disprove that hypothesis. As developers, we do like to write code. So if you must write code while you're trying to read it, writing new tests is quite a good way to be writing and reading at the same time. Given that we do like to write code, there are some other ways we can write code that will help us to understand the code that we're reading. Tidy the code as you learn more about it. I'm reading Kent Beck's Tidy First, and there are a lot of tips there about how we can make the code that we're looking at just that little bit better as we understand it more. This will leave it in a slightly better state than it was when we found it. We can rename methods so it's clearer what they do. We can move related methods closer to each other so that you can keep them in your brain at the same time. We can extract small helper methods and give them useful names. We can do tiny things like add blank lines to more clearly group related lines of code. I want to leave you with my final tip for reading code. We have to remove our ego when we read code. When we read code, we are often consciously or unconsciously judging it. Perhaps because reading code triggers the part of our brains that's been trained to perform code reviews, or perhaps because our brains are racing ahead to think about how to change it. We are judging it, and we're often judging ourselves at the same time. For example, ugh, this code is worse than something I could have written. I hate it. 
or, oh my goodness, this code is so much better than mine. Why can't I write code like this? Or, oh, this code that I wrote is awful. I must be a terrible programmer. We are constantly judging the code and directly or indirectly judging ourselves. No wonder we hate reading code. If we're reading a book, we don't think, I wouldn't have written it this way, I hate it. We might enjoy the book precisely because it was written in a way that we couldn't. Because it's unexpected and surprising. Perhaps we could take a little bit of joy in reading someone else's code. Perhaps we could take something out of it like, oh, I never thought of doing it that way. Instead of, ugh, why don't the author do it my way? When we're reading code, we should sit back and enjoy the ride. We're going to learn something from it. We might learn something from the code itself, or we might learn something about ourselves or our team. Most importantly, don't judge the code. Don't judge yourself. Don't judge the code's author. That will just make you miserable. Thanks for watching. Thanks also to our patrons who support this channel and get loads of other goodies from being part of our Patreon community. If you're interested in being part of the community, check out the links in the description below. Thanks and see you next time.